Hi, my name is Phil, and my wife Amy and I are building a Chesapeake Lightcraft teardrop camper. Continuing our mad dash for the finish line, we pushed hard to get things done over a couple of days. Amy and I assembled the galley insert, cut holes for the electronics, and we installed the galley hatch. CLC recommends you dry fit the galley insert module so you can visualize which edges need to be rounded over and which ones butt up against others or the bulkhead and need to be kept flat. CLC includes convenient pictures in the manual to help you identify parts and which edges to round over. Assembling the galley insert began with trimming off the tabs left by the CNC machine. I picked out my 1 8 inch roundover bit and adjusted the depth to less than half the thickness of the plywood and checked to be sure the bearing was going to make contact with the wood. I recommend making a very light pass. You need something for the bearing on the router bit to guide on. If you set the depth of cut too deep, the bearing will not have anything to roll against and the cutter will wander into the wood. You really don't want that to happen. If you have experience with using a router, you won't make this mistake. If you round over the wood with sandpaper, you won't make this mistake. If you just ran down to your local hardware store and bought a router, then I suggest you start with a light pass and then lower the router slightly to keep rounding over. With routers, you need to pay attention to the direction of cut. Remember that to have the same direction of cut around the outside of an object as around the hole inside an object, the direction you move the router is reversed. The direction taught in school is counterclockwise on the outside cut and clockwise on an inside cut, and the reverse of that on a router table because the router is upside down. So, if you're new to routers, then do the opposite of the direction of cut you see me doing. I'm doing something called a climb cut which reduces tear out. The manual that came with your router will tell you to do what's called a push cut. I'm not going into a huge amount of detail here, but Fine Woodworking has an excellent article about climb cutting and it's well worth reading. I'll put a link in the description below. After dry fitting the galley insert, I gave them a quick coat of epoxy. Because of the move, I ended up with a bit of a rough finish and I didn't take the time to varnish. Assembly is a bit like the cradle at the beginning pieces slot together like a kid's dinosaur model. This is one of those activities where you won't easily be able to undo a misaligned box, so I assembled on a nice flat surface covered in plastic. Check your parts twice. I very nearly swapped two similar parts, which would have resulted in having to chisel the galley insert apart. After tack welding the parts together, Amy and I filleted them with epoxy thickened with cellophil. There were a couple of spots where I had to take a chisel to the fillets to clear the way for the battery cover to close. I don't have any pictures of this, but later, in order to run the wiring the way I wanted, I drilled a couple of one-inch holes in the back where they wouldn't be seen. That allowed me to run wiring for the speakers, lights, and fan inside the cabin, and the speakers that I installed in the galley insert. Amy and I decided that we would like fans and interior lights in the cabin. Since that meant installing electronics and a big marine battery, I decided it also meant we could install a stereo and a USB charging outlet. So there were quite a few holes to cut. Fortunately, CLC will send you a full-scale layout on a sheet of paper. Before installing the connection points for the galley hatch struts and before cutting and drilling holes for the electronics, 
you need to find the center of the bulkhead and mark that on a piece of masking tape. I used blue masking tape to mark the center line of the bulkhead before marking the locations of the various holes using the layout on the template. When cutting holes, although it means probably buying a tool you may never use again, I recommend using a hole saw instead of using one of those paddle shaped spade bits. Spade bits are great for certain tasks. Drilling holes in plywood with a spade bit will almost certainly result in some pretty ugly tear out. In my opinion, the worst possible choice for drilling large holes is one of those spade bits with a threaded center point that is designed to dig in. Those are great if you want to drill a hole in a 2x4. If you want to drill a nice neat hole in marine grade plywood and you are able to do a good job with one of those, congratulations. You're much more skilled than I am. You probably do this for a living and you should definitely have your own YouTube channel so I can watch and learn. Tri flute bits with a similar screw threaded point are also the worst. They are just as worst as the spade bits or any other self feeding bits. Anyway, other options include Forstner bits, but you'll be drilling some pretty big holes, especially if you chose to install a stereo and speakers. I'm not even sure you can find a Forstner bit in a 4 inch diameter. Using a hole saw isn't without its challenges. I found my small one and a quarter hole saw had a surprisingly shallow depth of cut that was almost but not quite half the thickness of the plywood and I didn't want to go out and buy another one so I pushed it. The large holes for the speakers took an enormous hole saw which came with its own challenges. My drill was up to the challenge but the torque that was produced meant that as the saw dug in it really slapped the drill around in my hands. Since the outside cuts were long reaches, this was pretty tough to hold on to. Don't let your kids watch or they'll mock you for your noodly arms and lack of upper body strength. When you're using a hole saw or any kind of large drill bit, it really pays to cut from both directions. That helps prevent tear out and keeps the edges of the holes you cut nice and smooth. Here are a couple of tips and tricks. One. Screws are pointy. That's how they work. I recommend putting a little rubber welding cap on screw tips that are hiding in the cubby holes, otherwise you might cut a knuckle open while digging around in the cubby hole. The screws that hold the speakers on are a perfect example of what I mean. Two, remember the mantra, drill, fill, drill, and fill in holes with epoxy and then drill them out again. It's what you do when you drill holes in the outside of your camper. Keep in mind that it's pretty likely that at some point your galley flat will get water in it, and if you don't seal the holes in the galley flat when the water gets into the plywood, it will not come back out. Three, Set up your router and test it using scrap wood to make sure you aren't cutting too deeply. You can always go deeper on the next pass. While I was installing the electronics, Amy sanded and prepped the outside of the camper for a final coat of epoxy before I got on the road. I installed the bolts that hold the camper to the trailer. The last thing we did was install the doors. That will be the next video. Installing the insulation, finishing the wiring, varnishing the camper, all of those would have to wait until after we moved.
If you enjoyed this video, or even if you're duct taped to a wall and you've been forced to watch it, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when I upload another video. Thanks for watching.